Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to All Precision. Today, I'm working on one of the components in our Talon utility knife. In case you haven't seen it, this is an aluminum Talon utility knife. This is something that we make right here on our Haas VF2SS. And um, the way that this works is pretty simple. You have a button, a slide, and a body. You pull down the button, and then the slide and button traverse forward inside the body, snap in place. You have three open positions, and it's super easy to take apart to maintain or flip or swap your blade. Got a bottle opener, a little flathead driver, and then we have a lanyard hole. Got some nice little ergonomics. Of course, the logo on the backside. And these are just super handy to have around. Like if you throw it on your keychain, anywhere you are, you probably know where your keys are. If you're at the mailbox or at a store or whatever, you probably have your keys on you. That means you have a utility knife on you as well. And they're just very handy to have around. But anyways, we're gonna get to making the buttons today. But the way that I normally make these is pretty annoying. So I start off with a raw bar material like this, and then I clamp on it like that in our six inch vise, and I cut this top orientation. So this is kind of after the first cut, and you can see all the little bodies here, but now what I have to do is drill a hole through the side of them. So I have to unclamp it and flip it over like this, reclamp, and then drill a bunch of holes in the side. And I have to unclamp, flip it over like this, deeper the back side of the hole that came through, unclamp, reclamp, back like this, and then I use a slit saw to chop all the parts off the block. Then I just lower my program about a quarter of an inch and run it again, and I can probably get 40 or 50 parts out of one bar like this. But every 10 parts requires four interactions, four manual interactions, and every time I move this or unclamp it or flip it, there's a chance that I'm not loading the parts correctly. I'm basically introducing variability in my process, which is a no-no for machining. Now we have this rotary table and we have this really cool self-centering vise. So if I can mount that to the rotary table, I can do all the orienting automatically and it'll save me a lot of time and it reduces all of that variability. So we're gonna make an adapter today. Let's get to it. So like I showed at the machine, this is our piece of bar stock with our parts nested in it. And I have to cut this orientation first then flip it down here and drill these holes, flip it back over and then back up and cut off all the parts. That's a lot of manual inputs, four inputs per 10 parts. If I can make a rotary adapter where we can mount our self-centering vise onto our rotary table, then I can just let the machine orient this for me. And it's gonna save me a lot of time, reduces variability, the parts are gonna be higher quality, etc., etc. So I basically need to make these three red parts. Now I'm gonna show the fabrication process for the base only, and then we'll just go ahead and make the platen and uh, support off screen so we can throw it together and run a test cycle. Let's get to it. So here's our piece of stock and I have to clamp on it using these vice jaws. Now these are set up for double lock so basically this tombstone stays centered and then these two jaws clamp against it. So I need to change this over to single lock where this jaw is fixed, this one's floating, that guy's gone and I can clamp long ways on that block. We're gonna put it in here kind of like that. And I need to make sure that the edges uh, these saw cut edges are square, otherwise I'm not going to get a very good clamp across. I'm going to be using these inch and five eighths tall parallels and you can see the block's going to sit on top of that edge and only this little edge of the vice jaw is actually going to be clamping on the material. So I want to make dang sure that this is parallel so that when I go to clamp on it, I'm not just hitting like on a corner or a little high spot there. I want to make sure I'm getting a nice even clamp all the way across my material. So I'm gonna set this up and face off both sides so I know I have a square piece. I'm just gonna use one vise for this, but basically I just wanna set one side down, make sure it's kinda of clean, face off one side, flip it, do the other. You can see where I set the face mill originally, dragged it off and it came across and it cleaned up all that, but it left this a little low, so I'm gonna drop it down 10 thousandths and run it again until that cleans up. 10 thou seemed to do it, so we have a nice machine finish. I'm gonna take that off, deburr it, flip it over, and run the other side. Here's 
here's after the second facing, and this is actually a good example of why I'm doing this. You can see that it cleaned up here, meaning this was all kind of high, and it did not clean up this edge here. So had I clamped on that, I would not have been clamping on a square edge, and there's a possibility that this part could have been pulled out of the vise. I do have limited material, so I'm just gonna make sure that everything is square beforehand, because I don't wanna put a few hours into this part, have it get ripped out of the vise, and ruined because I didn't take a few minutes to square it up. But this edge is square on the back and I know the bottom one is too. So I'm not too worried about that. That's gonna be machined away. So this is good enough for now and we'll get it set up on the first top. So there's our Z. Now we're gonna find X center. And now Y center. All right, and just like that, we have our XYZ set and we can run our first program. Move this program over from our USB drive to active memory. And uh, we're ready to load some tools. tools are loaded this guy looks brand new funny story I actually drilled into my left hands uh, right there with the drill bit about this size when I was a kid uh, fun stuff This actually turned out a lot better than I expected. Uh, I'm very happy with this, and now we can get on top two. But man, doesn't that finish look nice? Let's do Bert. Got the old fixture plate off of here and I need to match up this 
OD with that ID. This one is 2.001 inches, so it's basically one thou above nominal. This measures exactly two inches. So I want this boss to be just a little bit smaller. So what I'll do is I'll comp the tool two thousandths of an inch. So this should come out to 1.999 inches, uh, about a thou undersized and should fit perfectly in that hole. So let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. Just skimming off a little bit. You can see the little shavings. It was just knocking off the outside edge. There we go. All right, let's see how it fits. Oh, perfect. Need to make the other two parts that will tie in here that actually support the vise. So if you can start putting this together in your head, this is the self-centering vise. And uh, it'll be sitting probably right about here. And this is all said and done with. Maybe a little closer, actually. So I gotta make these other two parts. Um, I'm not gonna show how to make them just because it's gonna add too much to the video, but I'll pick up with you when those are done so we can assemble it and throw the vise on the machine and test it out. All right, all the pieces are cut. There's one feature left to do on this side of the platen. This is where the vise is actually gonna sit. So there'll be four locating posts and uh, I'm not gonna cut this until this entire thing is assembled and on the machine so I can get it all tram in and then cut that final feature and it should be dead on. So let's get this thing thrown together. This is our base support. This is actually gonna be going underneath like that. I'm gonna go ahead and key this in. And I, I put these little slots in here, these alignment slots, just to keep everything square. Um, they have a little bit of play in there, like a thou or two, so not like a press fit or anything. Let's drop these in here. And then this guy will go here. See that slot there? Lines up with this one. Drops right on. And we have three screws to bolt this down. That is it. This side goes up against our rotary table. Got a nice support down there. And of course, once we get this mounted, we'll cut that last surface that the self-centering vise will sit on. That is pretty sweet, if you ask me. I think it looks good. We still have a good bit of clearance on the bottom. And uh, last thing we need to do is come in here at the nice long end mill and cut this last pattern. All right, check it out. It's finally done. Ran this final pocket. You can see the top of the post where the raw material was. Not worried about that at all. But this gives us a nice super flat machine finish to mount the uh, vise on. You can see these uh, four corner holes. We'll line up with this. Just like that. It's a little bit of a tight fit towards the bottom of those bosses. I think the end mill I was using was kind of dull, but uh, that's fine. Gives it something to I don't know, taper down onto. Then we're going to use these half 13 bolts and run these through. So that jaw snaps on like so. And this one, fit. Perfect. Let's go ahead and run a cycle, see how this does. Here's the magic of the rotaries. Just got done doing the top operation. That's pretty much all done. Now I've got my 16th inch carbide drill, little bitty guy, and we're gonna use that to drill the side holes. Now normally I would have to unclamp this and manually reclamp it, but now the rotary is gonna do it for us. Let's take a look at what it does. Check that out. Check it out. So these buttons were made without me having to mess with the machine at all. All I have to do now 
is uh, break them off this little tab, just like that. And they're pretty much finished. I gotta take off this little webbing on the back. Usually just do that with razor and a sandpaper, with a razor and a piece of sandpaper. And uh, then they're finished up. So I'm really happy with this. That's so easy to do, right? All right, that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you like this style of content where I'm actually building a fixture or kind of going through a, a process in more detail, let me know. I, I know the technical stuff can get kind of dry, but if you enjoy it, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to put out some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.